Hi, this is Ivarian X from The Candid Frame, and welcome again. Uh, today we're going to talk about hats. It's that time of year for us in the Northern Hemisphere where it starts to get a little bit, a little bit chilly. And uh, for those of us who are follically challenged, a hat is a big component of keeping us warm. But we're here to talk about hats from a photographic perspective. Now, if you take a look at a lot of the pictures that are in the Flickr poll, you have plenty of pictures of people wearing headgear one form uh, another it's sometimes it's as uh, simple as a baseball cap sometimes it may be uh, related to uh, a religion or an ethnicity um, or it's just decorative it could be a whole variety of different ways but i was looking for pictures in which the hat played an important visual com component in in the photograph uh, be it graphically or or it, having some influence in the way we experienced the photograph and uh, it was a bit of a challenge trying to find images that that exemplified that uh, but i did manage to find three and uh, let's jump into those pictures now here's a picture by gang gangzalo i'm probably messing that up but per per my usual but anyway he uh shot this with a uh, Canon 400D digital. I don't know what the American equivalent of that would be, but it was shot at 1 100th of a second at f1.8 and ISO 100. And in this shot, the hat is really the anchor of the picture, right? We we see this woman here who's looking at uh, photographs or books, or I'm not sure exactly what she's, she's viewing here, but the picture is not so much about her, is it? It's more about that hat. And one of the reasons why that hat stands out so dramatically from everything else is because everything else in the frame is rendered in a fairly dark tone from middle gray to dark black and everything sort of in between. But the hat itself becomes the brightest element in the frame. And it also possesses this great quality of contrast, that, that band that goes across the crown. That is a huge draw visually. Um, even though we have a lot of stuff on the table and in the background that's really kind of kind of busy, which normally would prove to be very distracting, our eyes gravitate straight to that hat, and uh, because of the reasons that I just I just described here. And it's not just a picture of a woman wearing a hat; it's a picture about a hat, and the hat possesses this wonderful graphic quality, the roundness, uh, its shape in counterpoint to everything else that stands in the frame, it's demanding that we look at it. And I think that's one of the interesting ways that uh, uh, the photographer here chose to use the hat in terms of making the photograph. Because if you look at a lot of the other pictures um, in, the, in the Flickr pool, we have so many pictures of people wearing hats, but they're just these small little details. It's not really the critical thing that makes or breaks the image. Uh, it's just one other thing. And when you can take a piece of apparel uh, and transform it into something visually exciting, well, that's, that's another thing. But it really calls for really careful seeing in order to be able to, uh, to pull that off. I think the move to go here with a very wide aperture in order to blow uh, a lot of the stuff in the background out of focus is a good move. Because those people in the background are, could be potentially distracting, but because they're not as sharp, as the hat, uh, they don't call to our attention. It looks like there was some black and white processing, uh, particularly in terms of darkening the area in the back, which is a good move there. Um, I don't know what the original RAW file or original JPEG looked like, uh, but you know this this image certainly does benefit from some post processing. But I think it does it in a way that doesn't uh, become distracting. But again, it's, it's about being able to see that hat as more than just a hat. It's about being able to see it as sort of a graphic element. And I think that's something we'll see in one of the other, other images that I, I share with here. Now here's an image made, made by Luis uh, Miguel Torres. I uh, don't know what the whole name is here, but uh, this was shot with a Leica M at 1 8, 1 8, 1 800th of a second at F16 at ISO 200. Now, here we have another picture of a woman wearing the hat, but it's a very different photograph, isn't it? Uh, 
Here we have the benefit of seeing the woman's face, seeing her expression. Uh, there are still people in the background, but they're not as dominant as they were in the previous shot where you would be dependent on some post-processing in order to get rid of them as a potential distraction. But here it's not so much about the hat. It's really about the woman and her expression and, her, and the gesture of her hand in the middle of the frame. But the hat becomes a framing device for the very thing that we're being drawn to, her face. The, the way her, that hat, the brim of the hat is shaped, and the way it sort of encircles her entire face and neck um, is beautiful. It really allows us to emphasize her face in a way that may not have been as effective had she not been wearing a hat, and uh, the only thing encircling her head might have been just the, the sky. Could you still have captured this wonderful expression uh, without a hat? Absolutely. But there's something about the hat and the contrast that it, it creates uh, between the brightness of her face and sort of the dark areas of the hat itself, the contrast of texture between the material of whatever this hat is and the sort of the smoothness of her face, uh, all plays beautifully. Her blouse also helps to frame uh, here this area of the neckline also keeps this in, in, in the context here. Um, the hat, just like the previous image, is very graphic. And I think those are the two things that this image and the other image have in common that I didn't see in a lot of the pictures that I, I was scouring through when I was going through all the images in the Flickr poll. And that's not to say that some of those other pictures weren't good. I mean, there were some really nice portraits that were made with people wearing hats, but the hats weren't really critical. Uh, to the success of, of the photograph. They just were an element in, in the photograph. And what I'm, what I'm looking at here is about being able to take the nature of the hat, its shape, its texture, its color, its tones, and to be able to see it a little differently and to be, use, and be able to use it a little differently in order to make the shot work. And I think we'll, we'll see uh, a bit of that in the, in the final image here. Now, this was shot by John Krill, who shot this with a Fuji X-Pro1, uh, shot at 1 680th of a second at f8 uh, at ISO 200. So we have here uh, a lifeguard at the, at the speech scene, and he is framed through the window of the door that leads to the lifeguard station. And the hat here is, pro is a lot smaller than it is in the other two shots. I mean, it's a smaller element in the frame here. Uh, but it is a critical component of this of the success of this photograph for me. Um, the expanse of the majority of the frame is taken up by the beach scene, by the people on the beach, the ocean, the sky. The lifeguard, even though he takes up almost a, a third of the frame here, he's, he's obscured by so many things, right? The door, the hat. So we really have no, no sense of who he is uh, in particular. He's not an identifiable person in this shot. The one thing that defines him is the presence of that hat. And the the hat serves a real practical thing for him in terms of keep giving him some shade so he doesn't get burned. But it's the hat that makes this a really interesting photograph for me. I try to imagine this shot without the hat, even with the same gesture. And I think it might be an interesting photograph, but there's something about the roundness of the hat that makes the shot really sing for me. Um, I think it has a lot to do with the shape and also the sort of the gesture of his arm, uh, of his left arm leading up to the top of the hat is, you know, he's viewing, uh, I guess he's viewing the horizon, maybe through a pair of binoculars. I'm not, not really sure, but whatever he's doing, that hat becomes um, what defines him um, in, a, in, in, a, in a strange way. And the hat becomes that sort of critical uh, component. Um, we don't see a lot of the, the, the t details of the hat. We don't see so much the texture, the color, um, you know, the fine details that we see in the other two hats. Uh, but even though we don't see as much detail here, it's amazing how the, the hat still helps to define this entire, this entire photograph. It's really a, a fun image that in, in its simplicity, uh, Despite its, it, despite its simplicity, how effective it makes it as, uh, as a photograph. So that's just really cool. And it's just something 
for you guys to think about when you're out there photographing this this holiday season. There are going to be plenty of people wearing uh, hats in a variety of different ways. But do you think you could make a, a, a photograph that isn't about a person wearing a hat, but somehow revolves around the hat itself as a graphic element? That's That would be a really interesting, really interesting challenge. Because just by uh, scouring all the images that were posted here, I had a really... Uh, tough time finding those three images that exemplified that idea just because we don't really think about it that much and I think it's a you know as an exercise it might be interesting to give yourself a personal challenge to see whether you can take hats gloves shoes or anything like that and somehow take them beyond whatever literal quality they have as a physical object and make something really interesting so I hope you enjoyed that, and uh, if you're liking what you're seeing here, please subscribe to our uh, YouTube channel. There will be a little banner down here at the bottom. And uh, if you haven't joined the uh, Flickr uh, community here uh, for the Candid Frame, just all you have to do is ask, and I'll be glad I'll be glad to add you. And if you uh, have not listened to an episode of the Candid Frame, do yourself a favor. Go to thecandidframe.com and listen to some of our uh, recent interviews, which have featured some of the world's best established and emerging photographers. And remember, as always, please subscribe. So thanks a lot for joining me again, and I'll, I'll see you next time.